I don't mean that literally. <clears throat> okay, so recommendation, rather than being a prediction problem of ratings, instead what we are saying is, forget about ratings. I know I can only, I only have space on my web page for five recommendations. Let me just find that subset of five. Who cares about ratings? As long as those are five good ones. And that's what we uh, call uh, uh, top N recommendation. Okay? So what we are doing there is essentially the same thing, but our evaluation function changes. We are not interested in how close the rating is to what the rating was. We are just interested in if I find five and I've hidden some of the, rate, uh, the items that have been consumed, do those items that I've hidden from the training data sit in what I have found as the five items that I want to uh, recommend? Okay? I'll just come to those wonderful formula that will be all over the, the place. Um, so let's look at evaluation of recommender systems. Essentially what we are saying is there are two ways in dealing with this. One is where you have a timestamp that you want to take into account. So you know that somebody has consumed items in a particular time series dimension, right, over time. You want to take that into account. If you want to take that into account, then you have to split the data where you're saying, I've got training data, which is in time t, my previous period. I've got validation data, which is my second period, and test data, which is the third period, right? So it's on time that you're doing the slicing of your training test and validation sets. If you are not, if you don't have the timestamp or you don't want to take it into account, then you can just keep a random set of ratings out of the item, uh, user item matrix and utilize that. 